Any questions about uh, anything down to this point? All right. The, I'm sorry for those people who are not in class. Uh, they're not going to know these things. And most of these things I'm not going to announce. So this is one of the things that you need to know when you're in class. Uh, test is after the break, not before. So study break, afterwards you come in. One of the days, either in your lab or the other one, you have your test. OK, test, midterm, whatever you call it. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we want to talk about arrays, complete the, the, su the subject on, on arrays, and then move into structures. And then probably, if we have time, to have some sample thingies with the structures and write some uh, uh, functions that work with structures to see how it works. Um, we, down to this point, the only functions we have written, they don't receive anything from any other function. They just return something. That's the only thing we know about functions, right? So probably that's the, the example that I'm going to give you with the structures. But that's, that's what it is. Uh, when you want to um, write an application, usually, uh, especially the, when the application is about gathering information, you have information that are relative to each other, OK? For example, you get student marks. And then you want to search on it later on. If that is the case, if you actually want to have several information about one thing held, that's where we use parallel arrays. Uh, say I want to have few students. I don't know how many. So I want something to identify the students with. And what is unique for each student is its student number, right? So what I will do, I will create an array. I'm going to say maximum 100. Let's assume it's 100, not more than that. Students that I want to analyze and see or search for the marks or whatever. And I'm going to hold 100 student numbers. OK? So that's a unique thing that I want. And then I want to hold, I want to have three marks for these students kept and then analyze it for whatever reason. So let's say I want their IPC mark, ULI mark, and EAC mark. So I create the exact three arrays for those purposes to the exact same size. So I'm going to create an, an IPC mark that is 100 doubles. And I'm going to create a ULI mark that is 100 doubles. And I'm going to create an EAC mark that is 100 doubles. And what happens is that by creating something like this, I'm creating a parallel structure. It's exactly like a table when you think about it. When you have a table, how does a table look like? The table, again, I'm going to use my artistic side. So, so when, I want, when I have a table, the table actually looks like this. So it's, it comes one, one column, two columns, three columns, and four columns I have over here. Then I do it like this, correct? And I go like that. Now, this becomes the, this becomes the student number. Student number. This becomes IPC marks. This is ULI. And the last one is EAC. OK? So this is 0. This is 1. This is 2. And it goes right down to 100. OK? So this becomes student number 0. IPC, 0, ULI, 0, EAC, 0. So all those with index 0 refer to the same record about the same student. Then if I want to know, like if I want to search for a student number, I'll go through that student number array and I keep going. Then I'll find out, like the fifth one is the student that I want. So index 4 is the record that I want. So I'm going to show. Student number four, IPC mark four, ULI mark four, EAC mark four. Therefore, I get all the information about that student. Having the same index of several arrays referring to the record of anything is called parallel arrays, and that's what we are using in here. Um, am I making sense? Yes. Zero to 99. Thank you for precision. Oh, shoot. I want to just clean that one. I put clear, clear all by mistake. So anyway, 
it was 99. It's all gone now. We don't need to. Anyway, so, so that's that. So uh, what I need to do, so it's a maximum number of 100, so I don't know how many I actually have. So I'm going to need to have uh, some variable to hold the actual number of students that I want to hold the samples for. I need an index for uh, the loop to go through them if I want to. And then it's the standard thing. So um, I'm going to ask to see how many students I have. We know that, simple and straightforward. Please enter the number of students, and I get the students, the number of students. And then after I get the number of students, I'm going to start collecting all the samples. So I'm going to actually tell, OK, please enter the marks, or student marks, or pre uh, enter the student students' marks, OK? What the devil is that, zero? Did I drop it from somewhere by mistake? Does it look OK? Yeah, so first I'm asking, please give me the number of students that you have. You've done this 50 times with, with temperatures and stuff like that. And then I'm going to say, please, uh, now let's start getting the student marks. And of course, I'm going to do that with a for loop. And I'm going to show the row number. So I'm going to have a for loop over here. And in that for loop, I'm going to say uh, uh, enter. Uh, no, um, data entry row, entry row three. And that's what's going to say two. So it's going to actually show that one. And then I'm going to ask, okay, what is the student number that you want to get? Okay? So what, what student number you want to uh, receive the information for? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually ask. This is the student number. And I'm going to put it on the index of the loop. So when it's 0, I'm getting student number 0. So 2596745, that will be the student number 0. It's going to go in there. And it's going to get the student number for that student. Then I'm going to ask the individual for indiv individual marks one by one. So essentially. Every single one I'm going to ask for, it's going to go like this. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? You don't look OK. Are you OK? English, please. Well, this is English. Like, is the I enter a negative number? No, you mean validation? Yeah. So, my friend. We, in class, when I'm giving you a sample of thing, when I want to make a point, I'm not going to write a complete program with all validation and stuff. I'm going to let you do that in an assignment. Okay? I'm not going to like, I'll give you one sample of what validation is, and that's it. From now on, whenever you want to do something, write a validation thing. When we are good with functions, we did a function with for, uh, for uh, data entry, right? Yeah. For integer entry, the, one. the foolproof one, right? Yeah. We did that. It's your fault. It's his fault, people. I was just writing a simple code so everybody understand. Later on, you can beat him up outside of the class, OK? So, so what I'm going to do in here, anybody remembers where, when we did this? In the lab. In the lab. Int funks, maybe that's the one? Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, voila. Wrote it. Beautiful. So in here, I'm going to copy these. Beautiful. And I'm going to add a file over here called tools. Add new item, tools. Let's see. And I'm going to put all those beautiful stuff over there. So what do I have over here? I have get mark that receives a mark. Uh, I'm, they made the mark double over there, so this is useless. Uh, I have get int that receives an integer. That's not bad. It's OK. So if I want this to work exactly for uh, a double mark, I can actually write the function for it in two seconds. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. So that's the get mark thingy that I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to bring it over here. So in, this is going to be get double. So this is going to be a double return. It's going to return a double. And so I'm going to have over here get double. Let me just put this thing over here. So this is going to be my function. It used to be get int, right? Now it's get double. 
So the value I'm returning is a double. Uh, character remains the same. This is instead of percent %d percent %lf. It receives the value. And if it's wrong, it receives it again. So LF, and it returns it. Voila, so I have get double. I just got that get int. I just changed all the ints to a double. Ta-da, same thing, right? And I'm going to go for that get mark thingy. I'm going to say get double mark. OK? Get double mark, and that's a, a double again. If I can type it, of course. It's double again, and again, int changes to double. And, and here is going to be get double. So it gets the double if the value is less than. So what is a double mark between 0 and 100, right? Something like that. Invalid mark. If it doesn't work, get double again. And I think we're done. Ta-da! So we have the get double thingy. Let's bring this up. I don't need it here. Let's put it, oh, where did it go? Yeah, so up, 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 up. I'm going to bring it right up there so that the prototypes are up there. So I need get int, get mark, get double, and all those things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring these because I may want to use them. I'm going to bring them over here at the top, and I'm going to say, uh, I don't need flush keyboard. I don't think I do need it. Uh, get int, get double, and then get mark, and double, get double mark. Void. I think that's the other one, right? And I have the prototypes. And now because you want to do check entry thingy, so instead of enter a number of students, I'm going to say num is equal to get int. And that's the validation that you are asking for. In here, I'm, I'm getting the double, uh, the student number. So STNO is set to get int again. And now in here, STNOI. And when I'm getting the IPC, I'm getting it a double. So the double mark, so IPC mark. So essentially, the IPC mark will be set to Get double mark. All right. And same thing over here. We don't need this. We don't need this. Get double. We don't need this anymore. And we don't need this. Happy? OK. Now we have a foolproof data entry. OK. I just use, I brought the tools over here. I'm just using the functions that we have written before, and hopefully everything's going to work. And you know, 99% of the time, it doesn't. You have to actually go debug it. But hey. So the point was of all this that we got uh, kind of deviated from the thing was that um, I, I have created four arrays, all same size, so I can put the relative information in the same index for every and each. So I'm going to say how many students I have. I get the value. So I have num students. Then I'm going to loop through those number of students and do the data entry row by row and, and enter the information for uh, every and each student to its own relative index. So if the first student I'm entering has whatever student number, it goes to student number 0. Its IPC mark goes to IPC mark 0, ULI mark 0, EAC mark 0, and it keeps going over and over and over. Are we OK? Are we OK with this? Now, after we have done this, after we have done this, comp, so the data entry is finished, done with data entry. OK, let's do search. Now we have the data in the, in the program. Now I want to search. So if I want to search, I want to keep searching, right? I want to say, OK, enter the student number. If they get the student number, I'll show the marks for the student. I'm searching, search and display the data. Then after it's done, say, you want to do it again? They're going to say yes, then I'm going to do it again. I keep doing it until they say I don't want to search anymore. Okay? For that, remember, whenever we have a loop that we don't know when it's going to end, and we have to kind of end it on the fly whenever we need to, we create a flag for it. So I'm going to create integer done in here. 
and that is um, n not done, of course. Then in here, I'm going to say while not done. Okay, then I'm going to write whatever core I want to do. So I want to say, please enter the student number. So I'm going to write, please enter the student number. And then I'm going to have to have a place to put the student number in it. So I need a student number entry. So for that one, I add an, another integer, student number entry, to do search for. So I'm going to say STNO entry is set to get int. So that is the student number that I'm going to get. And after I get the student number, what do I need to do? I have from index 0 up to index num the information filled in and all these things. If they want to look at the student's mark, I have to go through the array of student number one by one. So I have to go through this array student number one by one because all the student numbers are in here, right? If the student number entry matches that one, I have to show all the information exactly on that index. And that becomes my search. Okay? So to do that, I need to go through every and each, right? And if I want to go through every and each, I need to do a loop. So in here, now that I got the the, the, the student uh, number entry, all I need to do is to do a loop again from zero, start from zero. This is called linear search because you are uh, going through everything one by one. So I start from zero, I go up to num, and I'll go I plus plus. And on every single loop, I'm going to check if the student number entry is equal to the student number I, I have to have two. Remember that? Lots of you made that mistake, and it says uh, you got a warning. So one by one, it will check it. If I find it, if it's a match, it means I found a student, right? Are we OK with this? It means I found a student. Ta-da. So the student is done. And as soon as the student is done, now what do I need to do? Uh, I need to print all the information about the student. Uh, so I'm going to say OK. Uh, now that I found it, these are the student information that you need. Student marks for IPC percent to LF, ULI, and I'm going to show every and each individual uh, mark that I have for that student in the parallel array table that I have. Are we OK with this? All right? And if I find this, if everything's OK, I have to break the loop. So the loop has to be broken, correct? Right? So I'm going to make something because I don't want to search the rest of them again. OK, I don't want to search the rest of them. Because I don't want to search the rest of them, I'm going to make this thing condition to go bad. How do I do that? What is the impossible number? I'm going to say i is equal to num plus 1. OK, something like that. So what happens over here? Let's say I have five students, and I find it on the second student with index on the third student with index, index 3. So i is now 3. i is now 2. So student number entry will match student number 2. Then it prints all the information. Then it's going to say 2 is set to num. That is what? 5 plus 1 becomes 6. And then when it comes out of the for loop, 1 will be added to it. So it will be 7. Is 7 less than 5? No, it will break and go out. Correct? I made it something impossible to break the loop. Do not use a break in there. That's against our religion. We don't do that. OK? Break, continue, cannot be used ever. The only place you're allowed to use break is in a switch statement. That's it. You're not allowed to use break anywhere else. Yes? That statement is wrong. You said both loops being written at, as one nested loop? Yeah. That for loop is called nested loop right. because it's inside another loop. That's a definition of a nested loop. Yeah. It is a nested loop. Be nested inside the one above, which is to, uh, Enter the information of the students? Yeah, go through this. Information. What if you? That's when you are entering the students. You don't have all the data. When you enter the second student, what if they want the mark for the? 
25th. How do you know which one is what? And what if I want to do the search again? That's data entry. This is searching two different places. Usually that happens in another program. Yeah. And all the information from the thing gets saved into a file. So you're not entering I mean, just think about the question that you asked. It's like you are asking for one of every and each of our names. And before you get the names of everyone, you want to search for Michael? And the the yeah, that's what we are doing. Yeah. I know, but could you do that for I? Like the first, you loop, you um, iterate through the first array, which is the uh, student number, and inside this loop, iterate on all arrays. I have no idea. Uh, Forget about programming. Think about logic. You cannot search while data entry. That doesn't make sense. Remember I told you when you are programming, you have to think logically. To come from home to school, first you have to open the door of the house, then you come to bus stop. You cannot go to bus stop and then open the door of the house. That's impossibility. To be able to search within data, first you have to enter the data. Don't confuse yourself by trying to make things simpler when you are still not mastering the logic. I know you want to make it shorter and make it better. I admire that. But the problem is that first, develop the logic. Go back, take a look at your logic, see if you can make it simple. Our brains at this moment, you're going to be like that 20 years from now. But now, our brains doesn't know all the big picture because it doesn't know you don't know where to put what. So first, let's finish all the sequences, OK? All right. So, and now, I have a question that I hope that you can focus on this now. On line 42, 44, okay? How can I find out if I could not find any student? There are actually two ways. How can I find out if the search was unsuccessful or successful for other matters? It's still number in three because it's not equal to the student number. It won't be. Oh. To, to, to which one? To which one? No. I could find the student and come over there. So say, let's do it like this. Say I have five students, and I find the student on index three. So student, uh, student entry is equal to index three. It comes over here. If it finds it, i becomes num plus one. And then it comes up over here. Because i is now not less than num, it breaks and comes over here and ends. And if it's unsuccessful, what happens? Walk through that scenario. If without walking through, you can't do it. And to make it simple, always make it the short, shortest amount of possibilities. Let's say I have only two students, 0 and 1. OK? So it comes 0, checks. Student 0 does not a match. It comes over here, becomes 1. Is 1 less than 2? Yes. It comes in. Is student number yada yada equals to uh, student number 1? No, it's not. It becomes 2 comes up over here. Is 2 less than 2? No, it breaks out and comes over here. Yeah, yeah, but how? How do I find out when to print that? Oh, what uh, is the condition over here? Check the value of I. To be what? To be none. Thank you. So if it, if it actually reaches to the end of the loop, how it's going to break? i becomes equal to num, and then it breaks, right? So the only way that it can do that, it's for i 
to complete the for loop for i to become num. If it comes over here, it's going to be num plus 1, so it's, it's not going to be equal. So like that, I can find out if it wasn't successful or not. So that's the very bad way of doing it, awful way of doing it. OK, I mean, like, ugh, I am doing it very bad, and I'm going to make it better. So if i is set to num, then printf not found. OK? Now, what is a good way? How is a good way? Like, first of all, the way I did it is like a, the worst way you can do it. Because anybody who looks at it, although it's going to work, i is equal to num plus 1, what the heck that means? Why, there's, why the guy set it to num plus 1? I have to comment it I, in front of it. Uh, uh, making the condition false so it should yada, 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 things like that. So mention certain things to see if it, it so to, to, so to, to, uh, to, uh, to explain to the person who comes and debugs our code how, the, how we did it. But the best way of doing it always, always, always is to create flags. When you want to look for an event, create a flag for it. So what do I do? I'm going to set over here. Do you see that done thingy? I'm going to create over here int found. And I'm going to set it to 0. I didn't find anything, right? And in here, I'm going to say, if I'm here, I'm going to say, found is 1. Yay, I found something. And in here, I'm going to say, if not found, do that. And I'll make sure that that found thingy, at the beginning of every loop, that found thingy, at, before the loop begins, again becomes false. It's kind of a pessimistic thing. So first set the found to nothing. It means it's nothing is found. Search, 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 search. If you find it, found is one, right? Then you come out. If found is one, it means it, that thing got printed and it found, right? If not, it's going to say, if it's not found, print not found, and goes up again for the next search, OK? Of course, I have to put something over here to uh, uh, stop that, uh, you know, to check to see if we want to continue or not. That's easy. For that, all I need to do is to go something like this. Done searching, and I'm going to say 0 or 1. Then I'm going to say done is get int. All right? So they're going to say done searching. If they say yeah, 1, yes, then it's going to be done will be 1. Then it's going to stop and get out. OK? So I'll walk through it for you to see what, how it's done, just to see how the, how the parallel array, arrays work. And when we are done over here, I'm going to say printf goodbye. All right. All right. Now let's walk through F10. I'm pressing F10 to see how it runs. I have errors. No, let's see what is the error. Pritnif. Where did I put Pritnif? OK, that's it. Printf. One more time. Another error. What is this one? Unresolved, yada, yada, yada. Get double mark reference in function main. OK, so let's look at the, the uh, get double mark. Did I? Uh, bubble. That's a that's a new version of double. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's copy that. Copy. And did I make the same mistake in here when I was writing the get mark? No, it looks okay. So let's look at here. Is this one okay? I think so. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, it looks okay. So. Let's put this one over here and put this one over here. Move this to right. Too much. All right. Now, when we start F10, nothing over here is initialized. And because of that, they're all garbage. I don't want to go through it. Num is garbage. I is garbage. Uh, done will be set to 0. Found will be set to 0. 
st uh, student number entry is garbage. Please enter the number of students. I'm not going to go through get int. We have done it last time. We know it works. I'm going to press F10. It's going to get the integer. Number of students, I'm going to put four and hit enter. Okay? Then it comes over here, sets the i to zero. Is i less than num? True. i is zero, num is four. It comes in and prints data entry row one. It prints i plus one. That is one, right? Then it gets the student number. Then it gets the IPC mark, ULI mark, and EAC mark. So IPC mark is going to get entered. So I, uh, oh, a student number first. So uh, one, two, three, four is the first student number. Now the IPC mark will be 3456. And then it's going to go to ULI mark. And it continues like that. In here, I'm going to put 78, just 78. Hit enter. So this is going to keep happening. I'm not going to go through that. It's going to happen four times. So I'm going to put the stop sign right beside my while loop. And I'm going to say continue. So it's going to go one by one. EAC, it's going to be 56.7. Data entry 2, student number 2345. IPC mark is 89. ULI is 100. EAC is 78.90, and that are entry 3, it's 3456. IPC number mark is 66. ULI is 77, the other one is 88. Entry of number 4, U student number 4567. IPC 23.45, ULI 67.89, and that one is 55. All right? And now, student entry is finished. I entered four information. If I go look at my uh, values, you will see that student number, the first four are filled in. And we have for double, for student mark, the exact same thing. As you see, the first four are filled in. And it keeps going like that. OK? So all the data entries are filled in. Now I'm saying, while not done, so not done is true, because done is uh, zero. So it comes in, and it says uh, student entry. Now I'm going to put 2345 in here, 2345, and hit enter. All right? So found is zero. I is four, now becomes zero. And then the condition is true, because it didn't go, it, it's less than, uh, it's less than four. It checks two, three, four, five with student number zero. They are not the same. So if skips and goes back up, now I becomes one, right? Two, three, four, five, and two, three, four, five. It's a match. So if statement is going to happen, it prints the marks for that student. Then it says found one. So it found it. Now it's going to go through the next two. Of course, it's going to fail because student number is unique. Now it comes down. If not found, not found is false because found is true. Not found is false. Nothing's going to get printed. It's going to ask done searching. I forgot to put a new line over there at the end of that one. So that's a mistake that I have to fix. Done searching. I'm going to say zero for no. Hit enter. That's not a good uh, thing, too. So let me fix that. It's got to go like that. And I need a new line over here, too, that I forgot to put. Let's continue. Then come back up. If you see I press F10, if IDE is capable of it, it's going to recompile and apply your changes. So for the next one, it actually works properly. OK? But if it's too much of a change, then it's going to tell you that the changes are made and I cannot recompile. You have to rebuild your, your code. This was uh, an easy thing. So for the next one, I'm going to do not found. So it's, we're going to come over here, get the student entry. I'm going to put over here 888, hit enter. Obviously, found is 0 when we start. Then it goes through every single one, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's not found. Because found is zero, 
not found is true, it's going to say not found, and it's going to say done searching. Now I'm going to say yes, I am, and I hit enter, and we get out. It comes out, and goodbye, and the story is done. All right? And we do not need to change the assembly code of the memory. Are we okay with this logic? Everybody's okay with this? This is parallel array. When we have parallel arrays, this is how things work. All right? Now, we have 45 minutes. So, break, we come back, we're going to talk about structures, okay? All right. So this is how we did it with parallel arrays. Now, to be able to get the student marks, what I had to do over here to create four separate arrays and then keep in mind that the same index in these arrays refer to the same students and go through it like that. Instead of doing this, we can package all these things into one thing. And that makes our lives much easier. So this one was the parallel array. I'm going to save it as parallel array. So 0, 1. OK. Now what I can do over here, instead of actually creating Instead of actually creating four things like this, I can create a structure, and within that structure, I pack all these information together. That construct is actually called a structure in C language, which I can pack stuff that are relative to each other into one entity. How do I create it? Instead of doing actually something like that, I'll create a structure. So the package, so I'm gonna call, I'm gonna create a structure, I'm gonna call struct, struct. And in here, like, let's call it student marks. Student marks. Remember, structures always start with capital. Okay? And then in here, the information I need about the student. So I need integer student number. I need double IPC mark. I need double ULI mark. And I need double EAC mark. All right? Now, to create, to get one, to create one instance of this structure, all I need to do is to repeat the exact same thing in here. So do something like this. I can actually do this. I can actually say struct student marks. I'm going to call it mark entry. So mark entry becomes one instance of a package called student marks that has student number, IPC mark, ULI mark, and EAC mark in it, inside of it. OK? Are we okay with this? Now, so if I actually want to get a student mark, let's actually write a function for it. Now, remember that I told you functions are only capable of returning one thing. The functions cannot return two, three, four. It's impossible. Okay? In C language, marks, uh, functions only return one thing. But now, because we created one package of four things, we can return that one thing still. There are four things in it, but it's one entity I can return. So what I can do, I can actually have a function created of type struct student marks. And I'm going to call it get student, student marks. It doesn't receive anything. OK? Now, in, remember I told you, as soon as you create a, a, a function that returns something, create an instance out of that one and return it, we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'll create an instance of it. So I'm going to say struct. <coughs> student marks. Hmm. 
values, okay? And I'm going to say return values. Now in here, I'm going to do all the student entry that I was doing in here. You see this? I'm just going to get that, copy, and I'm just going to put it right over here. All right? So in here, I'm, I was getting the student number, correct? Now I'm going to say, put that integer, enter student number, put that integer into values dot student number. So this dot essentially means apostrophe S in English. So let's, uh, let's change that thing. Instead of values, I'm going to make it value or uh, I'm going to call it SM. Sorry, I just want to uh, be able to say it in English and doesn't get confused. So SM, so it becomes SM's student number. The student number that belongs SM. What is SM? An instance of student mark. Because of that, that fact, it has a student number inside, it has an IPC mark inside, it has a ULI mark inside, and it has an EAC mark inside. SM has four things in it, one integer and three doubles. And then when I get the next one, I want to get the double mark. Instead of IPC mark, I'm going to say I want SM's IPC mark. Sorry. And in here, I'm going to write SM dot. Uh, the other one is ULI mark. And finally, I have SM dot EAC mark. So, and at the end, I'm going to say return SM. Now, see how does the function look like? In my function, I have one variable. What is that variable? SM. What is the type of that variable? Struct student marks. What does it have? It has four fields inside. One integer called student number, one double called IPC mark, one double called ULI mark, one double called EAC mark. Inside this function, I ask for a student number and put the student number into the student number of SM. Then I get the double mark, put it into the IPC mark of SM. So I'm putting all the information into the package. When I'm done, I'm going to say return the package out. Okay? So the package is returned out. Now, what I can do in here, instead of, in here, instead of having four arrays of 100 things, I can create one array of student marks that is 100. So I'm going to say struct. Oh, this intelli thingy. OK, and then uh, what was the name? Uh, student marks. Now in here, I'm going to call it marks. And I'm going to put over here 100. So instead of having these four things, I am going to create one array of 100 marks. And because the marks that are, or I'm, let's call it a better name, I'm going to call it ST mark. ST marks, OK? So ST marks, 100 ST marks, and each ST mark has four things in it. It's four, a package of four things. So in here, what I will do, I'm going to say, please enter the number of students. That's the, the amount. A data entry, row. And instead of all these garbage that I have written in here, all I need to do is to say, student marks, I is set to, what is set to? Get student marks. And done. So I get all the data entry one by one very nicely right in here. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? All right. Now that we have done that, in here I'm doing the student number thingy to, to see if it's a match, right? Instead of doing that, I'm going to say if the student number entry is 
set to student marks i dot student number. So if the student number inside the record is equal to student number entry, now start printing the, uh, the individual elements inside student marks i dot so let me just copy that and because I, we named the, the fields the exact same thing I'm gonna remove this alright put this one in here control V and let me just go to new line so we have everything in one so remove that one so the array index is removed from the last and it goes to the package so student, so you allow, so if the student mark, student number of SD marks I is equal to a student number, now print the, the IPC mark of the same package, the ULI mark of the same package, and EAC mark of the same package, and it goes through. Much more elegant, much more handy, and much easy, much more easy to use. Okay? One thing I have to tell you about structures. That is this one. In here, we are using our functions over there. What if I wanted to use scanf to read that thing? Where does the percent sign go as address of? So this one I'm doing get ink, but let's. Mm. If I wanted to use scanf, so I'm going to comment that just to teach you how to where to, where the ampersand goes. In here, I have to say scanf percent d exactly as I'm reading an integer. And you do it exactly the same way that you're doing for scanf, but you put the whole identifier of that student number thingy. So sm dot student number, and then you put the address of right at the beginning. So if you want it to directly read inside into the structure, that's how you extract the address of the student number of sm. Okay, so the ampersand comes right at back. It means the address of this entity. Very simple and straightforward. Okay, and that's what structures are. There is no hidden agenda around it. They are very, they're amazing things to make our work easy. Instead of trying to see how we are going to pass 55 things out of a function, all we do, we package them into one entity and poof, we return one thing out and it's done. Okay? Are we okay with this? Yes. Too quick? Yes. Okay. So, let's uh, first, first make sure it runs. Control F5. Just want to make sure that I don't have any errors. Uh, oh, it's already open, so let me close that. All right, one more time. All right, enter the number of students. So everything's okay. I don't want to go through it. It's, uh, um, let's put over here two. Oh, uh, let me just walk through it. So I'll start. All right, so I start with main. So as soon as I start, uh, the student marks are created. Now, if we look at this, this is how it looks like. Element zero, student number, IPC mark, ULI mark, and keeps going like that. So each element of the array is one structure with four things in it. OK? Now I'll come. The, the logic is exactly like the other one, done, found, entry, and everything. Enter the number of students. I'm going to enter two. Hit enter. Please enter the student marks. It comes in here. It shows the row number for data entry. Student number. It's asked. Oh, I'm actually putting two students, so this is not needed. I'll remove that. So I'm going to put the stop sign here. Stop it and run it again. Okay, so it was two, hit enter, there you go. So that's entry one, 
Now it goes to get ST marks. So I press F11 instead of F10. So it goes inside the function get ST marks. Oops, wrong button. There you go. ST marks. Now it comes in here. A variable is created with four garbage values in them. The this, this structure has four things, student number and everything, but they're all garbage. The first one is doing a scan of to get the student number because we commented the get int. So student number, I'll put one, two, three, four, and hit enter. Now if we look at the, uh, the structure in here, we'll see that the student number is one, two, three, four, but the rest are garbage. OK? Now we get the next one. So the double mark is going to be for IPC, 7788. And I'm going to go right to the end before returning it. ULI will be 88.88 .88 and EAC 99.99. Hit enter. And now if I look at SMC over here, you'll see that all the values are set in a package called SM. OK? In a package called SM, what is the type of SM? Student mark. And it's going to return that out. It returns it out to where? It returns it out into the student marks zero. It's all garbage, but as soon as it gets executed, you will see that it overwrites all those values with the values that was written in SL. And then goes to second elements. Now I becomes one. The data entry exactly happens the exact same way. I'm not going to go inside anymore. So this one is two, three, four, five. Whatever. IPC 33.33, 44.44. Oh, invalid, invalid integer. I have to fix that message. I uh, converted a double thingy, but an error message is still integer. So that's the wrong thing I have to do. So 44.44 and um, 6, 6, hit enter. Now, if you look at SM over here, we have new values inside. That value will be returned right into student marks zero. So if you look at student marks right now, the first one has the value, but second one is garbage. And as soon as it's executed, you will see that the second one now has the proper values overwritten by the value that was written in the function. And the story continues like the other one. Are we okay? Okay, you want me to go through the search? Or it's okay? Okay, <laughs> he's not, no, please, I'm falling asleep. Okay, but I had to do that. Um, is that better now, more clear? Okay. So that's how structures work, okay? And uh, um, yeah, so let me just put this thing as, uh, uh, structures instead of parallel arrays dot C. So, oh, I put zero one again. Zero two. Well, actually, okay, and cancel. All right. So, just syntax wise, just syntax wise, I'm going to write a much simpler example just to see what the syntax is. Okay, so to create a structure. Struct, um, what do I create a structure for? Struct, I'm going to call it rec for a record. It doesn't make any difference. I just want to give an example. You can have many things in there. So integer uh, a and have a float. And this one, I'm going to make it an array. F3, so it has an array of three floats, and it has a double as D. So the structure record has three members, two 
regular variables, A and D as integer and double, an array of three floats. They're all inside the record. If I want to instantiate the record, I have to type struct record. and then uh, put a name for it. So R now is an instance of record, and it has all those stuff in it. So what you see between line four and eight is how to define a structure. To actually uh, uh, instantiate it, you have to rewrite the name of the structure with the keyword struct before, and then instantiate it. Now R is a structure of type record, if I want to read something into it, I have to go scanf percent %d, and if I want to put something inside the integer a, I have to put address of r, r dot a, which means the scanf, the first scanf that's going to be read, it's going to actually put the value inside that one. Okay? If I want to print the value out, I'll go printf percent %d, And I'll put R dot A exactly like a regular integer, but you have to, it's just, uh, you have to mention who's the owner and which field you want to write into. If I want to have a loop to write the, read the three floats, I have to go, uh, let's have an integer over here, int i, for i set to zero, i less than three, and i plus plus. Now in here I can say scanf, percent f and in here I'm going to say address of r dot f i so one by one the float values inside the r will be overwritten by the values that are going to get read and if I want to print it the exact same way that's how you access the structures and the records inside and that's all. If you want to set one structure to another, you can always set one to another by, uh, by assignment operator as long as they are exactly the same. So if I have struct record A, you can say A is set to R. And it's going to do a member-wise copy from R to A. Everything's going to get copied from one to another. And that's the only thing you can do. You cannot compare the two. You cannot do a structure, the only thing you can do with two structures is assigning one to another, and that's it. If you want to do any kind of operations, you have to do the member to the members inside. Any questions? Yes. Pardon me? Oh, to in Oh, yes, 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 you can. But you know I don't like it. Yeah. So yeah, you can do this. But you know I don't like it. Okay? That's four structures right now. But uh, if you want to do it, please do it in separate lines. Any other thing? And creating an array of structures. You've already seen it. It's exactly like the same thing. So create an array of it, struct, record, uh, now I have 20 records, n0 to r19, and if I want to set the tenth one, it's going to be n9 set to R. Exactly the same thing. No difference. It works exactly like the same array. The only difference is that the, each element of the structure has four field, uh, those fields in it, whatever the fields are. All right? Please go through the other two and walk through it. If you walk through it once, you're going to get it. Are we okay? Questions? Suggestions? Objections?